Hi everyone, welcome back. So now that we know about variables and conditionals, we're going to do an example where we combine the two into one program in order to create some interesting motion. Uh, first, we're going to get a circle to kind of move across the screen and then wrap around. And then afterwards, we're going to get a little fancier and we'll get that same circle to bounce uh, between the edges of the screen, um, sort of the left to right edges, bounce back and forth between them. So first, let's give ourselves uh, something to work with here. Uh, I've created a new sketch, which I've saved already. And um, we're going to create a few variables that are going to allow us to define a circle in our program. <clears throat> and uh, we'll make these as global variables. Um, so let's say we're going to make a variable called uh, x. That's going to represent the x coordinate of our circle. And we'll create a variable called diameter. That's going to be our circle's diameter. And over here, um, we are going to uh, actually also let's make the canvas bigger, replace this with window width, window height. And then we will use the circle function to uh, use our variables to draw a circle. So we'll use our x variable as the x coordinate. Uh, let's get that circle just to be centered uh, horizontal, uh, vertically for now. So we'll use height divided by two for its y coordinate. And for its size, we are going to use our diameter variable. Uh, and then we saw that because x is a variable, we can change x over time to create animation, motion, to have stuff happen in our program as draw repeats. Okay, so take advantage of the fact that draw repeats always over and over. So for example, uh, we saw that we could, maybe we're gonna add a two. Let's do two so that it's not too slow. Actually, maybe three, because that's gonna take a while. So now what we're doing is we're saying add three to x, uh, every time draw repeats, and that's causing our circle to move to the right. Okay. <clears throat> so this is basically what we did in the, the first lesson this week. So now we know about conditionals as well. So what we're going to try to do uh, is first, uh, first we're going to try to get this circle to stop when it reaches the right edge of the window. In other words, uh, right now the circle just moves to the right, and uh, there's no other thing that can happen in our program at the moment. But let's try to see if we can get the circle to stop when we hit that uh, right edge. Okay? So if you wanna give it a go, try by yourself, you can pause and go ahead and try to figure it out right now. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm just gonna carry on and do it. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so how do we get this circle to stop? Well, first is we have to consider how would we ask the question, You know, wh what kind of question do we need to ask in our program? Uh, and sometimes things are a little bit counterintuitive when you're programming versus how things happen in, in the real world, okay? So for example, in the real world, I may just say, well, circle, stop moving when you've reached the right edge, okay? Um, but in from the perspective of a program where we're moving just means we're constantly adding uh, a quantity to our X value, uh, sometimes it helps to kind of flip, flip the tables a little bit and look at it from a different uh, perspective. And uh, I'll explain what I mean in a second here. Uh, but first is, I think the question we're going to have to ask is going to be centered around, you know, let's take a look at the position of the circle, which is an X, and let's see if we've reached that uh, right edge or not. Okay. <clears throat> so there's kind of two ways we can ask that question. We can say, we can say, have we reached the edge or exceeded it? So we would say it's X greater than, um, greater than uh, width, right? Or equal to width. Or the other way to ask the question is to say, is X less than the width? Right, so maybe let's see if we haven't reached the edge yet. Okay. So let's go with that second version. So we're gonna say if X is less than the width, okay. That tells us if the answer to that question is true, that tells us that the circle is still still hasn't reached the edge yet. In which case we'll make it so that it's okay for the circle to move forward. Okay. So circle is gonna be allowed to move forward only if we haven't reached the reach the edge. Okay? And the second the if statement starts returning false, in other words, when x becomes equal to width or greater than width, this if statement is going to return false and the, the result in our program is we're simply not going to move anymore. Okay? So this is kind of an interesting way of looking at it because it's counterintuitive, like I said, to the way things might work in the real world. Sometimes the answer to a programming problem requires you to sort of flip your perspective a bit. Here what we're what we're doing is rather than say, try to solve how to tell the circle to stop when we reach the edge, is we're asking the question, is it okay for the circle to keep moving? Okay. 
So it's kind of the two sides of a client. And depending on what you're trying to do, sometimes framing it from one perspective or the other is going to make the programming aspect a little bit easier. Currently, we just don't have enough to simply say circle stop, right? In our simple little program, it's much easier to say, uh, instead of stop, we say keep moving, right? Until a condition is no longer true. So this would take care of stopping our circle when it reaches the edge. Okay? <clears throat> uh, if we wanted, say, um, you know, for example, if we wanted the circle to maybe um, wrap around, okay, uh, we could we could add some code in here that says um, else, right? If we did in fact reach the edge, right, this would trigger in the else, and then we could say, okay, go into x, make it equal to zero again, right? Uh, I'm going to make this go a little faster because I don't want to have to wait for it for so long. <clears throat> so now when we reach the edge, right, we are okay to move as long as we haven't reached the edge. And then as soon as this condition is false, we're going to run this line of code here that's going to go and put zero back into X. Okay? Uh, we could make this thing a little bit smoother if we wanted to, because right now we're comparing X, which is the center of the circle. Remember, we're comparing the value of X, which just tells us where the center coordinate of a circle with the value width, which is the, the, the width of our window. Um, if we wanted to give our circle a little bit more time, perhaps before we bring it back to the beginning, we might just change how we formulate this question. Um, instead of comparing X to width, maybe we're gonna take into account the diameter as well in that equation. Maybe we're gonna say if X, right, is greater than width plus diameter divided by two, which is half of the circle, right? That's our radius, right? So now we're giving a little bit of extra time because the thing we're comparing with, the number we're comparing with is now we've pushed the goalpost a little bit further. How much further? We made that based on diameter. Okay, so it's very helpful to have variables for that purpose. Uh, similarly over here, we don't have to make it equal to zero again to teleport back to the beginning. We could say instead have the, the circle jump over here, just a little bit off screen so that it can make a nicer entrance, right? Right now, right now it just kind of pops, it just appears, okay? So instead of zero, we're gonna move it further in just enough so that it, we don't see it. And that is um, half the diameter of the circle, right? Or the radius, um, but negative, right? So if this is, if we're going to the left of zero, we go into the negative numbers. So we're gonna say negative diameter divided by two. And now we should get a slightly smoother <clears throat> uh, just kind of animation, right? We have our circle moving to the right. And then with the if statements, we're controlling what happens in our program. Uh, as long as the circle hasn't reached the edge, we let it move. And as soon as it does, it triggers the else clause, which, bring, which brings it back to the beginning. All right. So this is good practice for kind of combining variables and if statements. Now let's up the ante a little bit. Um, rather than just have a circle moving to the right, okay, and just kind of wrapping around here, which is fine, maybe that's what we want to program and we're happy with this, but let's make something a little bit more complicated. Um, we're going to get this circle to bounce back. So when we reach the right edge, okay, I would like the circle to start moving to the other direction, okay, as opposed to simply teleporting uh, over here. So. If you want to think about that problem a little bit, now would be a good time to pause. Um, you can maybe try to do it yourself, uh, ponder this a little bit, and if not, uh, I'm just going to move on and, and go over the solution right now. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so if we want the circle to bounce back, uh, we really start to radically change our thinking how we approach this particular problem. So this bit of code here works great if we want to do is wrap around. But bouncing back is a completely other, as a completely different problem, even though both of them have to do with motion. Okay, so I'm going to uh, get rid of some stuff here just so that we can, um, <clears throat> gonna get rid of the else, uh, just so that we can simplify here a little bit and um, take a, a step back. Okay, so now we're back to the code where we just don't move if we've reached the edge. Okay? And what I would like to happen at this point. Is uh, or maybe a little a little sooner. Maybe we'll say with minus diameter over two, just to make it look a little nicer, All right? So we're gonna wait a little. Okay, over here maybe. At this point, I would like the circle to start moving to the right, uh, to the left. Okay. 
Now, what does it mean to move to the left? Well, it means we want to take x, right, the value of the position of our circle, and we want to start to see that value decreasing. Okay? We want to start to subtract from it. <clears throat> and currently, um, we can't do that unless we make our program a little bit more detailed. The reason we're stuck here, and probably if you try to do it on your own and maybe struggled a little bit with the solution, uh, is because this is a this is a hard coded number. This plus five here, this is the thing that's moving us to the right, um, can never change, right? In the program, this is always going to be plus five no matter what. So if the circle is visible within the window, it means it can only ever go in one direction into the in in on the right. Okay? If we want the circle to go on the left, this would have to become a minus five somehow so that we can start to go to the left. So what that points us towards is this idea that the five here, which conceptually we can think of it as this is the speed at which our circle is moving. So if the circle is moving at a speed of five pixels per frame, right? We're adding five pixels to its position. So it's moving at that speed. Um, this speed, right? Sometimes has to be positive if we want to go to the right. Sometimes it's going to have to be negative if we want to go to the left. Okay? Therefore, um, if we if we just put it in as a number in our program, a number cannot change in the code. It's kind of carved into stone. The thing that can change, however, is a variable. So if we have a variable for the speed, now all of a sudden we will have something that we can manipulate. Okay. <clears throat> speed over here. So we could say, okay, now I've replaced this five with a variable. So already we're one step ahead. Now we, instead of having a fixed five, we have a quantity that we can change. However, we're going to have to ask ourselves, when do we want that quantity to change? In the previous example, we had an if statement that kept checking X that basically said, you know, are we there yet? It kept checking X and said, is X less than the width, right? And if it isn't, just keep going until you reach the edge. In the bouncing scenario, we have to shift our thinking a little bit because it's a different problem. We have to think about when do we want the circle to bounce? And the only times when we want this to happen is when the circle has reached the edge. Okay? We don't want the circle to bounce before or after, just when it reaches the edge. So we're going to sort of shift our thinking a little bit and we're going to say, all right, now motion in our program is going to look like this. <clears throat> we're going to say, always add the speed to x. Okay? So whatever speed is, we're going to always add it to x. And then sometimes we're going to change direction. Okay? We're going to say if x ever exceeds this point over here, okay, we know that it's time to start going the other direction. So if x ever becomes greater than width, right, minus the radius here, just to make it a little nicer, we're stopping a little sooner than width, we're going to now say speed equals minus 5. Okay? <clears throat> so now we're waiting for this point to happen. And when that happens, speed becomes minus five. And then now our program is always moving the circle based on speed. However, now what the if statement is doing is changing the value of speed, right? Now the if statement is keeping an eye on X. And when, when we reach a certain point, we go in and write another number down inside speed. Okay? Um, what about the left edge, right? Could we get the circle bouncing back and forth? Well, sure. We can do the same on the left edge. We could look for the situation where our circle is going to be moving out of the window. Okay, And uh, when that happens, we can tell it, well, actually start going to the right, go back to being a positive number again. Okay? So um, <clears throat> let's write an if statement that will do that. So we'll say, okay, now let's keep an eye on X, right? And we'll say if X is less than, um, so we could say less than zero. If we do that, that means we've we're half of the circle, right? We're kind of over here, and then we're we're about to leave the window, the center. Um, but we can do the same as we're doing on the other side. Sort of look for the point maybe over here, right? So that when the center of the circle is here, it's going to look like its edge is touching the the side. So that point over here is simply diameter divided by two. Okay, so this is the point over here. So if that happens, uh, we're going to make the speed equal to minus 5. Okay? Now we have to be a little bit careful here, because notice when I first started the program, oops, my circle just goes to the left. 
Why is that? Okay. Well, that's simply because of the way I've written these two questions. I said if x is less than diameter divided by 2, okay, and uh, it is in the beginning, remember, I set it to 0. Okay, So it is in the beginning less than this imaginary barrier we're creating here with our if statement. Therefore, this if statement is going to say, OK, Captain, got it. Speed equals minus 5. And our circle is going to start to go to the left. So how do we prevent that? Well, we're just going to think about what x starts at with. So maybe I'm going to declare it after diameter and make it equal to diameter divided by 2 to begin with, so that we don't start um, to the left of this imaginary line we've set for ourselves here. Uh, oops, and this should be equals to 5. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Actually, I think it probably would have, uh, even if we didn't do that, I was wrong about this. I think it would still go to the right. Um, that said, it's a little risky to get our circle to start kind of before the if statement threshold, but um, yeah, it doesn't matter. We can get it to start at 0, or if we want it to start a little further in, we can do that as well. Uh, the problem was I set it to minus 5 to begin with. My bad. Of course, it would go on the left side. <clears throat> All right. Um, so now we have our circle bouncing uh, back and forth right in the window. So let's, uh, before we wrap up this example, um, let's talk about a couple of ways that we could now then improve this code a little bit okay? and kind of avoid repeating ourselves. Well, first of all is, you know, what if uh, we have here our speed variable kind of being defined in three different places. Okay? What if I wanted to experiment with a different speed? Maybe I wanted to set the speed to one to begin with, just have it move really slowly, or maybe uh, let's go faster, okay, 10, right? But then as soon as I hit the wall over here, as soon as I hit the edge, uh, speed is gonna become minus five and it's gonna become five here. So I would have to go and make it equal to 10 and make it equal to 10 here, okay, in three different places. That is a huge red flag when you're programming. Uh, if you find yourself having to change a number, a quantity, in more than one place, there's probably a better way to do it. Okay? Uh, this is very prone to errors. And of course, this is a really tiny little program. But imagine we're writing a full game or something a little bit more complex. There might be you know, sometimes like hundreds of places in the code where we would have to go back and remember to change the value of speed to make sure that we didn't forget any. So let's think about, is there a better way that we could write this? Well, in this case, once we've defined the speed of our object using this variable, um, really what we intend to happen when we reach the edge of the window is that we simply want the speed sign to change, right? Not necessarily its value. I just want to say, if you were going at plus 10 to the right, when you reach the edge, go to minus 10 so that you can start to go at the same rate, but on, in the other direction. So what we could do is we could simply uh, change the sign of the variable, not its content. So how do you change the sign of a number? Well, you may remember from probably elementary school, if I remember correctly, uh, if you take any number and you multiply it by minus one, you will get the same number just with the opposite sign. Okay. So if your number was negative, you will get a positive number. And if your number was positive, you'll get a negative number. Uh, you can write it like this, or for simplicity, you can also simply just put a minus sign in front of a variable and um, that will have the same effect. Okay, so if it's already negative, it will make it positive, And if it's positive, it will make it negative. So by doing so, what we're doing is we're simply just changing the sign of the speed variable, not its content. So in both cases here, we have speed equals to minus speed. Okay? And now I'm free to experiment. <clears throat> I can change, you know, I can set different values to speed, maybe go slowly, and I don't have to worry about changing it in three other places in my code, okay? So this is first improvement. There's another improvement we could do here. You may notice that uh, both of these if statements now do the same thing. Now that we've changed the way um, we are reversing the speed by simply changing the sign. Okay? In both cases, if we reach the right edge, or if we reach the left edge, we're doing the same thing, right? Exact same line of code. Now, this should be a bit of a, a clue that probably there's a way we can combine these into a single if statement because they're both doing the same thing. Now, I'll say it again, right? If my circle reaches the right edge or if it reaches 
the left edge. Uh, in either of these cases, we're, we, we want to reverse the sign of speed. Okay? That means that we can take this if statement, we can combine it with this one using an or logical operator. Remember from the previous lesson, or means we have these logical operators, right? We can combine A and B type questions using logical operators. In the previous example, we used and to see if the mouse was in a particular quadrant. This is a great example of using or, okay? We could say if width x is greater than width minus half the diameter, it tells us we've reached the right edge, or x is less than diameter divided by two, that tells us we've reached the left edge, right? So in other words, if the right edge or we reach the left edge, this is just to put a little, a little note explaining that statement, then in both of these cases, all we want to do is reverse the speed. So now we can get rid of the second if statement. Now we've just kind of combined them into one elegant single if statement. So this this basic um, program here, this is a concept we're going to reuse quite a bit down the road in the semester, all the way to the game we're going to be building at the end. Um, this is going to serve as the foundation of our basically simple motion framework. Okay, So we have this concept of a position. Motion is simply speed added to position over time. That gives us motion. And then we'll have some uh, if statements that act on that position to do something to the speed, to do things like bouncing within edges and so forth. Um, if you want to challenge yourself a little bit uh, for this video, uh, think about how you would get the circle to bounce around uh, all around the window, both along the X and the Y axes. Okay? Um, this is simply a matter of, of, of creating an addition, you know, additional variables for the X, for the Y coordinate, uh, but also for the speed. Okay? So um, because the X axis and the Y axis are different quantities, we're going to have to introduce the concept of a speed along the x-axis and a speed along the y-axis. Uh, so if you want to track, try to tackle that, um, go for it. Otherwise, uh, this is something we're going to explore down the road in future videos. Um, so we'll leave it at that for this lesson. Um, there is one more quick lesson for this week. We're going to talk about motion from a slightly different perspective. Uh, we're going to look at the concept of easing, and um, I'll see you in the next video for that one.